Hey everybody, um, this video is going to be on how to set up your math notebook. So this is just a math notebook that I picked up at my local store. Um, very important part of the notebook though, is it needs to be able to hold a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So some of the less expensive notebooks are 70 pages and they're smaller. They're not eight and a half by 11. Um, that's really gonna be a disservice as we move forward. So if you can, please make sure you get a spiral bound notebook that can hold eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, in thinking this over the summer, it is a possibility that this notebook could be achieved using a binder, but the truth is stuff goes missing from binders, pages rip out. This way of keeping it in the spiral notebook really, really keeps your notes intact and organized. So starting with my notebook, any cover you like, that's up to you. Uh, most commonly when I find these notebooks, they have a little pocket thing at the beginning, which can be helpful for you. Um, so turning the page past the pocket. And now I'm gonna go to the very first lined page. It really doesn't matter if it's college rule or wide rule um, because we're gonna do a lot of gluing in. So this is the first page I'm gonna glue in. We're gonna glue in four of these table of contents pages. So I use just your regular old glue. I prefer glue to um, glue stick because glue stick dries up and then the pages that I've glued in tend to fall out in a month or two. Um, Remember what you learned in elementary school, dot, dot, not a lot. You do not need a lot of glue to glue these pages in. Okay. And then you're just gonna put in your table of contents page. Once you do that, I want you to put in your student name. Okay, this is gonna be my sample notebook. So I am going to put my name in it because you're gonna continue to see me using this sample notebook, okay? I also want you to number the pages. So this one starts with page number one. Now I'm also gonna start the table of contents. We don't need a date here and we don't need a lesson number, but I'm gonna write table of contents. Sorry for the wiggling. And it's gonna be pages one through four. That's when it's gonna take up my table of contents. Now, I'm gonna move ahead a little bit and tell you that page five is gonna be something called math notebook expectations. And that's gonna be page five. Okay, so I've glued in the page and I've started my table of contents. On the math notebook, book expectations, you're going to see why she's making me do a table of contents. Yes, it's important. So if you notice, when I turn the page, there's a table of contents page on the back. I already pre-glued this one. Then there's one on page three. Then when I turn the page, notice I use both sides. There's a table of contents page on page four. When we get to page five, you'll have a handout piece like this as well called Math Notebook Expectations. So I'm gonna flip that over. Really guys, I feel like I'm doing a cooking show or something here. And I'm gonna glue this in. Okay, Math Notebook Expectations. And it doesn't matter how you line it in, it just goes on that page. We will talk about this more in class, but it explains why I have the expectations I have for the notebook or what the expectation is and the reasoning. Okay. I didn't choose any of this arbitrarily. I promise. Then I'm going to turn to page six, the back side of that. Now pages six and seven go together. So page six is going to look like this. It has a little house on it. And then page seven looks like this, okay? These are 
question starters. These are things that we use to do some of our questions, which is part of our AVID strategies at school. We are an AVID school-wide school, okay? And it helps us in some of our study practices. And we will use these all year. Uh, you'll have quick little assignments where I ask you to write a couple questions based on your notes. Okay, these will help you with that. That's why I'm giving you this reference tool. Okay, so now you've put in page six right here, page seven. And then turn the page again. Okay, and page eight is going to go over here. Okay. It's an example of how I would like people to show their work on homework. Now, this is a strange year and we are not going to get to turn in a lot of paper. There will be times where I ask you to send me a picture of your paper or something like that. Um, but you are not going to get to turn in a lot of paper. Okay. So you can see that's glued in on that side. Right now, page nine, you'll see this on legal documents sometimes. I'm going to write intentionally left blank. We're going to leave this page blank. Okay. So intentionally leaving this blank, we're going to move on to page 10 in a second. Now, as far as showing your work with homework, Occasionally, I am going to ask you to send me a picture or a scan or something of work that you've shown. Maybe even just a video of you showing me your notebook. <sighs> Math teachers have been saying forever, show your work, show your work, show your work. It is not because we just have stock invested in pencils. The more you show your work step by step, the easier it is to figure out maybe where you went wrong on something or explain your thinking to someone else. So it's really, really important that you show your work. Okay. Now the next thing, okay, I'm going to open my notebook back up again, is a little bit of a why. Now this is a preview into lessons. When we get into lessons, you are going to get some handouts that look like this. Okay, it's mostly typed. You can put it on the page at any point you want. Okay, I'm going to have a lot of typed notes and little bits, little examples that you're going to fill in. By having this full size notebook, you have room to put in these pages. Okay, that was one of my big reasons for the size of a notebook that I wanted. Now, Next question would be, how do I get all these things? How am I supposed to glue them in? Well, here are the answers. If you go to Schoology, and I'm going to go to any of our classes, the folder's the same in any class. So I'll go a third period. There is a folder called Math Notebook. If you click on it, I made one file, it's a PDF file, of the notebook setup pages. If you print that, you have everything you need to set up your notebook. If you cannot print it, you need to reach out to me, let me know so I can find a way to get it to you. Okay, so if I click here, it pops up, ta-da, okay, and it's all the pages that I just glued into my notebook and you can do the same. Okay. If for some reason you need individual pages, they're all listed here below. Okay. So this is it all together, this big PDF, and then all the others are below. When we get into lessons, about once a week, once every two weeks, I'm going to have a document that has all of these kind of pages. Sorry, I need to switch screens. All of these kinds of handouts for notes. Okay. Your notes will go so much better if you can print them. So if you need my help with that, let me know. I'll see what I can arrange. 
if you just, you know, a parent prints it at work once a week, that'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to have everything uploaded in plenty of time that you could print something um, before you need it. Okay, so just letting you know that these will be printable. You don't have to write all of this out. And then there'll be little bits that we add to, and that'll be the written portion. If you, um, you absolutely can't and you need to watch these things on your phone, you absolutely can write it all yourself. Um, I just didn't want you to have to do that. So that is how to set up your notebook, why some of the notebook things exist, and hopefully um, that'll get you started. I am going to do a notebook check. Um, so hopefully that um, check will answer any of your questions for you and we can get started uh, very, very well. So very proud of you and I'll see you later.